twirl effect images are very fashionable at the moment and this tutorial will show how to create one from scratch. I'll open up a recent image, this one's called Fish and has lots of very colourful fish filling the frame. We'll go through all the stages of creating a twirl effect from what could really be absolutely any image. The technique involves applying several filters in a series. So I'm going to record this as a Photoshop action. This means that I'll be able to run the action on a completely different image in future and get the same effect without having to go through all of the process manually. The first step is to open up the action tab and from the sub menu in the top right corner choose new action. I'm going to call this action twirl. I usually display the actions tab in button mode which means you can assign each one a colour. So to allow us to pick it out easier later I'm going to colour it red. OK, so I've now started to record the action and everything I do will be saved in a sequence. I'll close the Actions tab so that we have a clearer view and the first step is to convert the background layer to a smart object. Do this by right-clicking it and choosing Convert to Smart Object. The reason for doing this is that every time we apply the filters they will appear as separate layers beneath the smart object and can be reopened and changed as desired. The first filter to apply will put some texture across the image and that will allow for all of the subsequent filters to have more structure to work with. So from the filter menu move down to the pixelate section and choose mezzo tint. There is a drop down menu here which allows you to choose different types of texture. The one that gives the most pronounced effect is way down at the bottom, long strokes. So we'll go for that one. Press OK and the image has now been broken up with coarse horizontal lines. You can see on the right that the layers of filters have just started to build up. The next filter to apply is a zoom filter and you'll find this in the filter menu under Blur and Radial Blur. This gives you the choice of either spinning or zooming the image. We're going to choose Zoom and there is a slider allowing you to vary the strength. We'll go with 100%. I'm going to use the draft mode with this filter which speeds up the whole thing considerably and you can see it's applied the zoom filter but it does look a little rough and ready. Next click the filter menu again and the last used filter will show at the top. Click this to reopen the dialog box. We can leave the options exactly as before then click OK to reapply another filter. You can see that these smart filters are now being built up beneath the smart object in the order that they were applied. Final time with the zoom filter but this time we're going to change the quality setting from draft to best. This one takes longer to run especially if you're using a large image file but the result is much smoother and gives you a cleaner finish. This picture isn't particularly large so the filter hasn't taken too long to run. The final filter to apply is the twirl and this is found in the filter menu under distort and then twirl. This opens a dialog box with a slider beneath the preview window and this allows you to twirl either clockwise or anti-clockwise. I'm going to drag it to the right and apply the filter with a value of 300. This gives us our beautiful twirl with the colours swirled around a central point. To achieve the complex patterns that the twirl images can show you need to create a copy of the smart object with a twirl going in the opposite direction. 
So I'll drag the object down to the copy icon and make a second layer that includes all of the filters that we've already applied. Next I'm going to double click the twirl filter in the top layer which reopens the dialog box and this time we're going to twirl in the opposite direction. So instead of the value of 300 I'll change this to minus 300 to get the opposite effect. At the moment the top layer is obscuring the underlying one but by changing the blend mode from normal to something else the two images will blend together. You can try any of these modes to find the one that you like but generally the lighten or screen modes give the most pleasing result. For this one I'm going to choose lighten mode. Now at this point I'm going to stop recording the action so I'll open up the actions tab and click the stop button. If you're happy with the image you can just save it. But to see if our new action works I'm going to close this image down and open up a different one. I'll choose this one, lots of little Lego men, just pop that into full screen and I'll run the action to see what happens. The actions tab is still in standard mode and you can see that each step of the action has been recorded in a list. I'm going to switch this back to button mode by ticking that option in the sub menu and now we can see the actions easier and our new twirl one is coloured red. Click it once to make it run. You can see that all of the smart filters have appeared in the right hand side and the same twirl effects have been applied to this new image. If you want to you can further work on this image by making it look more symmetrical. You'll need to create a copy of the filtered image on another layer and then flip it. There's an easy way to do this in Photoshop that involves holding down four keys simultaneously. I remember it as CASE, an acronym for CONTROL, ALT, SHIFT and E. And by pressing these keys together a copy of whatever is visible beneath will appear in a layer at the top. It doesn't bring in all of the smart filters but for this purpose you don't need them. So now we'll flip the top layer by going to the edit menu then transform and flip horizontal which mirrors the layer and change the blend mode to something else. I'm going to go for pin light this time and you can see we've now got a much more symmetrical pattern with the image mirrored down the central axis. And that is pretty much it. There are a few other tweaks you could make. If you're not happy with the contrast you could add a curves adjustment layer to the image and go for a classic S shape to boost the contrast and colour intensity. And finally if you want to completely change the colour you could add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. This allows you to change the colour, the saturation and lighten or darken the image. So that's the twirl before the final two steps and this is the result afterwards. I think in this case I actually prefer the before version. But that's the end of the process so goodbye and happy twirling.